Hello dear friends, welcome to my channel Mukesh English. In today's video, I am going to discuss the famous poem Endymion, A Thing of Beauty is a Joy Forever by famous poet John Keats. John Keats was born on, th on 31st October 1795 and passed away on 23rd February 1821. He was an English romantic poet who devoted his short life to the perfection of a poetry marked by vivid imagery, great sensuous appeal, and an attempt to express a philosophy through classical legend. Keats focused his, his writerly attention on understanding and exploring beauty. For Keats, all things possessed potential beauty, and it was his job as a poet to find this beauty and capture it in his poetry. For John Keats, Identifying and understanding that which is beautiful allows one to become more acquainted with the truth. Introduction of the poem In Greek mythology, Endymion is a beautiful young shepherd who got charmed by the vision of Cynthia, the moon goddess. He was so enormed, he was so impressed by the goddess Cynthia that he decided to wander away through the forest to seek her. Keats wrote this poem, Endymion, a poetic romance on the basis of this mythology. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quite for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Keats commences the poem by saying that a beautiful thing is a source of joy till eternity. The poem continues to say that the beauty of a thing never fades away, rather it goes on enhancing with the passage of time. The poet then says that a thing of beauty is like a shady, leafy shelter, which ensures that everyone gets, lo everyone gets lost in a slumber full of sweet dreams and everyone remains healthy and calm. Therefore, on every morrow are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth, spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth, of noble nature, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and over-darkened ways, made for our searching, yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pearl from our dark spirits. The poet continues to say that, without the beautiful natural things around us, the earth would simply become a despondent place for us and we would be entangled in the clutches of misery with no scope of getting rescued. Human beings often go through innumerable challenges and, and obstacles in their lives, which make their lives overshadowed by the darkness. The only source of light for human beings amid us the darkness is the beauty of natural things that surround them. Therefore, the dark spirits of human beings are illuminated with light through the beauty of natural things that are present on the earth. Human beings engage themselves in wreathing beautiful bands from flowers and leaves that fill them with ecstasy and keep them connected to the earth even after the miserable experiences on earth. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shed of bone, for simple sheep and such a daffodils with the green world they live in, clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season the mid-forest break. The poet begins to point out the, to the various beautiful things that are present in nature, like sun, moon, the trees that provide the comfort of shade to all the living beings. The daffodils that emanate beauty through their brilliant yellow color and the green stems and the clear streams of water that make their way through the forest and create an atmosphere of coolness in hot summers. By pointing to all these elements of nature, the poet is asserting on the fact that human beings and in fact all the living beings are bestowed with abundant blessings and therefore we should be grateful for these natural blessings. Moreover, the poet compares human beings to simple sheep in order to sympathize with the innocence of human beings who ultimately seek solace in nature and overcome their miseries. 
rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms, and such to the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. The poet further continues to describe the beauty of other elements of nature, like the fair musk roses that bloom with an amazing fragrance that sprinkles all around them. Moreover, he also advocates the beauty in the death of martyrs, who sacrificed their lives for the greater good of humanity. All the lovely tales of sacrifice of the martyrs that are either read or heard by the human beings are also marked as a beauty of as a thing of beauty by the poet. The poet displays his commendable craftsmanship by the way he concludes the poem. Throughout the closure of the poem, he says that if human beings keenly look around the abundant blessings that are bestowed upon them by the Almighty, then they will feel that all the blessings seem to be poured upon them as an immortal, endless fountain from the heaven's edge. The poem reflects two important thematic views, nature as an eternal antidote to human miseries. Through this poem, the poet has advocated that the various elements of nature, like the sun, the moon, the beautiful flowers, the clear streams of water, the fair musk roses, etc., they all serve as an antidote to the human miseries, to the miseries of human beings. It is through these elements of nature that human beings become empowered enough to not be adversely affected by the complexities of their lives. The grandeur of the mighty dead. The poet also glorifies the sacrifices of the mighty dead and advocates that the tales of bravery serve as a source of inspiration for everyone. Human beings therefore consider the mighty dead as a benchmark of courage and they seek both ecstasy as well as inspiration by listening or reading to their stories of bravery. Dear friends, thank you so much for watching this video. You can reach me at mukeshenglish at the rate of gmail.com. Please do subscribe the channel, like and share it. Thank you once again.